My next guest is an award-winning journalist whose career has consisted of interviews with multiple U.S. presidents, athletes, and entertainers in Hollywood. Roland Martin is here, is here to discuss his viral interview with rapper Ice Cube, his thoughts on Black women being excluded from the contract with Black America, the importance of voting, and so much more. Please welcome Mr. Roland Martin and the host of Roland Martin Unfiltered. Hello, Roland. Claudia, what's going on? Man, it's so good to see you. Likewise, likewise. I'm glad to be here with you. It's been a long day. I was in Raleigh, North Carolina, Durham, Greensboro. Uh, of course, I've uh, got the election coming up. Early voting just started. And then uh, I'm rocking Virginia Union University because I kicked off their uh, global uh, president's lecture series today and did my show. So it's been a very long day uh, moving in three different states, but it's all good. 12 days before the election. There's a lot more stuff we got to be doing. So. You know, I first, of course, came to know of you like everybody else. Well, like most people through CNN, and you just was unapologetically black. You let them right. have it. You just knew your, you knew your thing. So I know that had to come with a lot. Like, how do you deal with, you know, being so outspoken? And I'm sure you get a lot of racist comments on your platform. How do you? Oh deal yeah. With I mean, look, here's the deal. Um, what folks don't realize is I went to Jack Hayes High School, Magnet School of Communications in Houston. Uh, we had our own, um, like I say, we had television station, radio station, newspaper in uh, the high school. Uh, I've been writing opinion pieces since I was 17 years old. When I was in college at Texas A&M University, uh, I actually, uh, the, the Aggie band played uh, the song Dixie at halftime. Uh, I wrote a uh, column blasting them. And it was so funny. I came home. My brother was like, what you do? I was like, what you mean? He said, bro, the answering machine. What did you write? Uh, and so, so I'm used to that. So it's no, it, look, I, I've been, look, look, racist white folks been saying stuff uh, again my whole life. Uh, so I, it, it doesn't bother me. Uh, I understand the history of America. I understand whiteness. I understand white supremacy, white privilege. But has uh, it ever gotten scary to you? Because like they, they, they really get more well, as of late. Probably the, you know what? It, I won't say scary. Mm -hmm. But remember when that crazy nut out of Florida uh, sent those uh, packages, bomb packages to CNN? Yeah. And one was addressed to Van Jones. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I was on that list. Uh, right. FBI, right. What happened was the FBI out of Texas called me and said that uh, we need to alert you of something. Um, I don't trust anybody just calling me. So I said, give me your phone number. Give me the main number to the FBI. I will call the main desk and ask for you. They were like, okay. And I did. And then they said, now we can do two. We can tell you over the phone or we can dispatch two agents to your home to tell you in person. And what they told me was, is that when they arrested that guy and when they went into his home, there were a series of names and addresses on his computer uh, that he uh, was targeting. And my name was on that list. Um, I didn't freak out. I didn't, oh my God, I, you know, I mean, certainly alerted family members uh, of what the deal was, but uh, took it in stride. I, I understand when you are outspoken and when you have a point of view that there are going to be people, there will be people who don't like that. Mm -hmm. It comes with the territory. Uh, the concern that you have is really not really you, not really your well being, but really that of your family. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's, that's one of those things. And so, um, there are crazy folks in this world. We understand that. Uh, we have seen other journalists who have been harmed mm -hmm. as a result of crazy folks out there. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but, but that cannot, we cannot allow that to stifle our voices, to cause us to clam up, to not say what needs to be said, because that's the only way. When you think about William Monroe Trotter, when you think about how Wood, President Woodrow Wilson, one of the most violent racists in American history, uh, kicked him out of the White House because he dared to question him too vigorously. Uh, when you think about Ida B. Wells, uh, who, uh, when she was writing about lynching, they bombed her office, put a bounty on her head, and she was literally running, at, you know, going from place to place because they said, how dare you write what you wrote? Mm -hmm. uh, the federal government during World War II, people don't realize this, if you read Ethan McKaylee's book uh, on the Chicago Defender, the federal government threatened black newspapers to prosecute them for treason because they dare to write about the racism that uh, black soldiers were facing in the armed services. And they said, you writing about that. And so the history of black press, the history of black journalists 
has been one of white America wanting to shut us up. And that simply cannot happen. It didn't happen then. And it can't happen now. Speaking of shutting up, I got to talk about the debate tomorrow and um, <laughs> we have thoughts and the mute button that will be implemented, which right. it's a damn shame that this has to happen with, grown, with well, a grown man and a half. So what are your thoughts on that? You think it's going to help? Well, first and foremost, um, there are no norms when it comes to Donald Trump. He is a 73, 74 year old child. Mm -hmm. uh, he is petulant. He's narcissistic. He's evil. He's demented. Uh, he's um, there are no word. No, he's uncouth. Uh, you can use up any of those words, and he has no respect for anyone. He has no respect for the rules. He has no respect for rules that his campaign agreed to. And I think even with them muting the microphone, he is still going uh, to talk over that. He is still going uh, to be an ass. And I think what Joe Biden has to do is, and there were times where Joe Biden certainly was was very frustrated in that first debate. Chris Wallace was as well. If I'm Joe Biden, what you simply do is when he does that, you just stop talking and you say, you don't even look at him. You say, let me know when you're going to stop being rude. And you look at the camera and you say, this is that what he should do. Joe Biden should say, he should step in. He say, America, I'm more than happy to have a conversation with you about public policy. But this person over here chooses to be rude. So we're just going to let him decide when he wants to stop being rude so we can actually talk to you as the American people. I he, should, he should not engage. See, he kept looking at Chris Wallace. No, no, no. The most powerful moment of the debate was when Joe Biden looked dead into the camera. Talked to the American people. He, I wouldn't. This is me in the debate. He doesn't even exist. <laughs> that plexiglass that was between Lindsey Graham and Jamie Harrison, mm -hmm. pretend that is a, I don't even look at you. While he's talking, this is me in the camera. While he's lying, I'm doing this here. <laughs> See, to me, that's how, that's how you deal. You drive a narcissistic person crazy when you ignore them, when you give them no oxygen. That that's so what Joe Biden should do. They need you as their supply. That's that, that's that textbook <laughs> yes. with narcissists. So let's take a quick break. Uh, Joe Biden, I hope you're watching. You're getting this great debate <laughs> prep from Mr. Roland Martin because he knows his stuff. We're going to take a quick break. More with Roland Martin and Out Loud when we come back. Welcome back to Out Loud with your girl, Claudia Jordan. I'm here with Roland Martin, who is always, I love watching your, your interviews, Roland. I just love how you, you're never thrown off. Like you're just so solid and you get to show all ranges of your emotion, which we need that. And I was particularly touched uh, on your social media when you made a visit uh, to a polling location and you saw the long lines. I believe you were in Texas. Were you outside yep, of Dallas? In Dallas. It's in Dallas. Um, mm -hmm. Can you just talk real quick about that moment? I just want to know, like, what you were, you were in tears. Yeah. And maybe a, too. And so when I vote, whenever I vote, I listen to um, freedom songs. Mm -hmm. uh, the Black Freedom Movement. Um, they had the SNCC Freedom Singers, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Mm -hmm. So whenever they were in jail, they would sing songs to keep each other focused and to keep their energy up. Uh, and there's a great, as a, as a CD actually on the SNCC Freedom Singers, I actually have uh, the whole the four set CD, uh, four CD set. So I, whenever I vote, I listen to, the, to this music. Um, John Legend did a remake, Woke Up This Morning. Woke Up This Morning with My, my State on Freedom. Uh, they did, of course, Glory, Common and John Legend. And so I, I already listened to those songs. And so I was listening to Trey Song's song, mm -hmm. uh, 2020 Riots, uh, How Many Times? And it was, I was listening to that. And then, so I'm sitting, it's 7.27 in the morning. I see this long line of people. It's 50 degrees in Dallas. Um, uh, and, and, you know, the sun is rising. And the day before, my hotel gym was shut down because of coronavirus. So I chose to get my 10,000 steps walking around Friendship West Baptist Church. And an old black lady in a beat up car with a handicap sticker hanging down. She pulled up, she said, baby, is, is this where the voting is going to take place tomorrow? <laughs> and I said, yes, it is. She said, now, now, where exactly are we voting? And so I told her where we were voting. 
And she said, okay. And, I, and, and so as I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about that, here was this old black woman scouting the location. She came the day before. And so I thought about that and I thought about all the efforts in Texas with Republicans, one male drop box in the whole county from Governor Greg Abbott. Mm -hmm. They were suing to stop curbside, curbside voting as well as to stop drive through voting and all the voter suppression ever. So I thought about what happened in the 40s, 50s and 60s. I thought about what's happening today. And I, I, I was it, was it just it just hit me. And I was very shocked. I was very shocked because uh, not like the first time I seen black people voting. It was all of those things combined, knowing full well that in the middle of a pandemic, when one in every 1,000 African Americans have died mm -hmm. due to coronavirus, if these black people said, damn the Rona, we're going to stand here with these masks and gloves and shields and, and cleanser, and we're going to vote because it matters. And voting for black people is sacred. There's a line in Glory where Common says, Freedom is like a religion to us. And so that's really what it was. It was, it was all of that that combined where, I, where, where it just hit me. And that's, that's really what it was about. Well, we, I, I felt it. And, and, you know, listen, these are emotional times. I, I feel it when, I, when I'm able to go and see people, especially I went and brought someone that never voted before the last time and I'm in their life. And it was just, it really felt good. I want to switch gears before we go. We only have a few minutes left, unfortunately. And, you sat down with, with Ice Cube. You talked about the contract with Black America. Uh, one of the highlights was an awkward silence from Cube when you asked what's in their plan that actually that they, that they actually took from yours. I want to know that. And I want to know about, you know, the timing of all of this. And how well, do you feel? I had it on the show last, last month and we discussed for a whole hour the contract with Black America. And so when the story came out with the, team, with the Trump people said he contributed to the campaign, I want to know exactly what happened. And that was the whole point. I'd already done analysis on the Trump platinum plan. I call it the, the aluminum foil plan because mm -hmm. it's, 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 a, it's a waste of waste. It's not even a real plan, okay? It's not even, it's, not, it's, it's two sheets and it's really one sheet. The first sheet is a cover sheet and then it's the second sheet. No real details, nothing substantive. So that's why I want to know, I was like, okay, what's in their plans, not in yours? Mm -hmm. And then um, I had Congressional Black Caucus who emailed me, they said, wait a minute, he's talking about, no, no I had a plan. Here are the things that's in his plan that we put in our bill that Democrats passed. And so, so we, we okay. the, the, the Jobs and Justice Act and also the George Floyd Act. So those things were actually passed by the House, by the, by the, by the House, but Mitch McConnell won't bring it up in the Senate. And so it was trying to get an understanding of that. And we talk about the timing of it. Look, I've always said, we're still constituents. We deserve to be taken care of as well. Mm -hmm. The problem is, my deal is you got played. Because you gave them what they wanted, which was your stamp of approval of their plan simply by participating when what they put out ain't real. It's not they, $500 billion. OK, but what, is, what are the specifics behind it? There are none. And so I was like, OK, Q, what, you met with them. You said they took from your plan, put it in theirs. Where is it? And so I, I don't have an issue with him using his celebrity to drive, the agenda, drive a conversation. That's why I also say it is important last month and last week that Cube, you also get with black folks who are already doing the work, who are already on the ground, who are already trying to move legislation where you bring your celebrity and put it with their activism and now you have a much more unified front. So use your celebrity and your power to help the black people who've already put this work in instead of meeting with someone who has said so many disparaging things and done so many horrible things to our people. I 1000% agree. And I do not think uh, Ice Cube is against black people. I think he is for us. I just feel right. like Trump administration certainly uses his stamp, like you said. Right. And so if you meet with them, look, we know all that he's done. If you meet with them, come back with something that's real other than... Oh yeah, 500 billion, but we ain't gonna tell you really what the hell it's about. So I wanna ask you real quick, we have two minutes left and I really want your opinion on this. Ice Cube appeared on my show, Cocktails with the Queens on Monday and we specifically pointed out that black women were not specifically mentioned in the contract. His defense was that black women are included in the umbrella of black people. Do you think he should have carved out a space for the concerns of black women who've been, you know, at the forefront of various movements? And there is there are a lot of things that we do need that's specific to black women. What do you think he, that that would justify? Reese Colbert, uh, who's Black Women Views on Twitter, actually challenged him on that on my show. 
Uh, and he said he certainly invited her and other women to contribute to that. There are things that are specific to black women. Uh, that is black maternal issues, neonatal care, breast cancer, things along those lines. And so, yeah, those things can be in there. He is correct. When you talk about black economics and uh, venture capital, black women start businesses at a faster rate than anybody else in the country. So that does include them. Sure. But there are gender specific things that you can put just like there are gender specific things as it relates to black men. And so that's where, again, having a comprehensive plan. But let me also reiterate, Ice Cube's contract isn't the only one out there. Black Features Lab has the Black Census Project. They surveyed survey 30,000 Black people. John Hope Bryan has his Urban, Urban Marshall Plan. There are multiple plans out there. What we need with all of these plans is to be able to amass our political will to push city councils, school boards, county commissioners, state legislatures, federal government, House, Senate, and White House on the different levels to make these things possible. There is no one person nor one plan that solves all of our issues it's a multitude of plans and a multitude of people and folks need to be sitting down. Kenny Gamble called me the other day. He's gotten a billion dollars invested in black communities in Philadelphia the last 25 years saying, I would love to sit down and talk to Ice Cube. That's where Ice Cube, get with Kenny Gamble. Cube and Kenny Gamble, get with Black Futures Project. Get with Until Freedom, Tamika Mallory. Get with NAACP. Get with Tef Poe. And so you have all these people out here doing the work. What we need is folks saying, I'm going to back you. You back me. Now we move together. All that is dissension, all the black people, yeah, 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 yeah. That means nothing because nothing is actually getting done if we're spending all of our time on social media, sniping at Cube, sniping at this person. I don't like you. I don't like you. That ain't advancing the ball. And to be honest, and to, to be fair, a lot of our viewers did not agree with uh, me bringing that up about concerns, specific concerns for black women. They thought I was. That's you know, fine. But guess what? That's but you are a black woman and that's your opinion. Just like, again, I, I, I feel like he's not the enemy. We're not the enemy. We, we, got, we got love from him. I just would prefer it to be, I kind of want it to be worked on in-house with other black people and not the Trump administration. We right. Try to with ties to Stephen Bannon. Again, I don't mind him meeting with Republicans, but come away with something substantive. That wasn't it. Exactly. Uh, in 30 seconds, um, Roland Martin, if you can, or in a sentence, uh, opinion on 50 Cent endorsing Donald Trump because of the tax plan and 50 go. Cent is stuck on stupid. It's real simple. First and foremost, the, the, the so-called Biden plan is to take the top tax rate back to 39 percent where it was in 2016. Donald Trump lowered to 30 percent. So when 50 says Biden's plan is 62 percent, it's a lie. 50, I need you to read something, bruh. That's a combining of federal tax rate, with the New York state tax rate, Biden is going to take it back up two points. That's all, 50. Thank two you, points. Bro. Read, brother. Read. Thank you, Roland Martin. I got to have you back on again because you always bring it.